bonus hit. It was a Sunday, February 27, 1972 was. It was sunny with a high of 37 degrees. Uh, President Richard Milhouse Nixon, Governor of New York State, Nelson Rockefeller, Mayor of New York City, John Billet Lindsay. And in sports and basketball, Red Holtzman's Nick Abakers rallied late in the game, but they still fell short, losing to the Baltimore Bullets 104-97 at Madison Square Garden. In the losing effort, Walt Frazier was the high scorer with 22 points, followed by Dave DeBusher and Earl the Pearl Monroe with 17 each, and Dollar Bill, Bill Bradley with six. The Knicks fall to 41 and 25 on the year. They were in second place in the NBA Eastern Division. In baseball news, the United States Supreme Court was set to hear arguments this week in the celebrated Kurt Flood case. Flood challenged baseball's reserve system, which binded players to the teams which first signed them. The result of the case was the beginning of the free agency movement for the players. On the silver screen, Robert Redford, George Siegel, and Zero Mostel were starring in The Hot Rock at the Translux 85th Street Theater. Elizabeth Taylor and Michael Caine were starring in X, Y, and Z. It was at the Lowe's Orpheum on East 85th Street. Sean Connery was starring as James Bond, Agent 007, in Diamonds Are Forever at the Kimball Theater in Yonkers. Gene Hackman and Roy Scheider were starring in The French Connection. It was at the Elmsport Drive-In on Route 9A in Westchester. And Clint Eastwood was starring in Dirty Harry at the UA Valentine in the Bronx. And this was a bonus hit for Malo. It's Suavecito at 101.1. FM 101, New York's oldie station. That's uh, an instrumental from uh, Dennis Coffey, a bonus hit called Taurus, if you're Taurus the Bull. And uh, we're going to begin the actual countdown of uh, February 27, 1972. You know, the information used in CBS FM's Top 20 Oldies Countdown contains music consistent with our format and is compiled from various sources. We begin with song number 20 from a man who was born Joseph Arrington Jr. in Rovers, Texas. He first hit the chart in 1964 with Hold What You Got. This tune was his third and biggest pop chart hit. It peaked at number two while on the R&B chart it went all the way to number one. On Bunny Killen's Dial record label, here's Joe Tex. Song number 20, I Gotcha. Oh, I Gotcha. Oh. Here's the number 19th song. It's moving up 28 notches. It was number 47 last week. The uh, three guys in this group met while growing up on a U.S. Air Force base in London while their dads were stationed there. They began performing in coffee houses all over London and in 1972 released their first album. This song was their debut hit and would go to number one for three weeks on Warner Brothers Records. Here's America with song 19. It's a horse with no name at 101.1. We're now continuing with the Top 20 Oldies Countdown of February 27th, 1972, with song number 18, down seven notches from number 11 last week. Led by co-lead singers Danny Hutton, Corey Wells, and Chuck Negron, this Los Angeles group first hit the chart in 1969 with one. From that point, they went on to have an incredible string of 18 consecutive Top 20 hits. This was one of them, and it peaked at number five on Dunhill Records, Three Dog Night, song 18, Never Been to Spain, at 101.1. Well, I never been to Spain. song number 18. Here's number 17. Moving up one from number 18 last week. After Diana Ross uh, left the Supremes in 1969, they never again attained the kind of success they once knew. In fact, this song was their very last top 20 hit. It peaked at number 16 on Motown Records with their new lead singer, Miss Jean Terrell. Here are the Supremes with Sorry. Song number 17 is called Floyd Joy. <laughs> It was number 16 last week, although these three brothers out of Manchester, England, had a pretty successful career going for them in 1972. Little did they know what was in store for them a few years up the road during the Saturday Night Fever period. Anyway, back in 1972, they hit the chart with this song. It was their 10th top 20 hit, and it peaked here at number 16 on Adco Records. The Brothers Gibbs, the Bee Gees, song 16. It's called My World on the Top 20 Countdown. CBS FM, it's my world, the Bee Gees, song number 16 on the top 20 oldies countdown. It's now 535. I'm Bobby J. 
Uh, Dean Anthony's going to be in tonight for uh, Vacation and Cousin Brucey, beginning at 7. And up next, song number 15 from a lady by the name of Beverly Bremers. Here's a message for all partners and employees of uh, Deloitte and Touche. Because of the World Trade Center explosion, Deloitte and Touche employees should check their voicemail and phone the Emergency Operations Center at 203-761-3600. Efforts are being made to continue service at a new location. Again, it's critical that all Deloitte and Touche employees check their voicemail and call the Emergency Operations Center at 203-761-3600. That's 203-761-3600. Seven six one three six hundred. A bounty hunter came out of the West. Who are you? Yeah, like you, I'm nobody. A loner by choice. He only needed his gun. But when a bride was kidnapped, I've got to go after that. He pledged to help a friend. If you're expecting a thank you kid, it ain't coming. Kenny Rogers. Nobody ever said life was fair, Benny. Travis Tritt, Naomi Judd, and Stacy Keach. A legendary story of the old West. Rio Diablo, a world premiere movie. Sunday on CBS. Partly cloudy tonight, breezy and cold, low in the upper teens. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a little milder, the high in the mid-30s. Monday, look for it to be mostly sunny, high mid-40s. Right now, it's 30 at 101.1. Top 20 countdown, CBS FM. We now resume the actual countdown, uh, February 27th, 1972, 21 years ago this very day, with song number 15. It was number 15 last week. The debut hit and the only top 20 hit for this singer and actress out of Chicago. It would peak here at number 15 on Florence Greenberg's Scepter record label, Miss Beverly Bremers. Don't say you don't remember. It's song 15 in 101.1. Well, I'm going to be CBS FM, yeah, Miss Beverly Bremers, Don't Say You Don't Remember. Song number 15 on the top 20 oldies countdown with Bobby J. And here's song number 14. It's uh, moving up from number 27 just a week ago. In the late 60s into the early 70s, this Queen singer-songwriter was one half of one of the most successful pop duos of all time. He went solo in 1971, and this song was his debut solo hit. Peaked to number four on Columbia Records, Paul Simon, the mother and child reunion song, 14, and 101.1 of on the top 20 oldies countdown. CBS FM, the mother and child reunion, Paul Simon on the top 20 oldies countdown, song number 14. This now is song number 13, down seven from number six last week. This song was an adaptation of Box uh, Jesu, Joy of Man's Desiring. In 1972, it became the one and only top 20 hit for this English studio group. Peaked to number six on Mega Records, Apollo 100's Joy. Number 13 at 101.1. <laughs> FM 101.1, yeah, that's uh, Apollo 100. It's called Joy on the Top 20 Oldies Countdown. That song, number 13. Back in just a moment with song number 12 from Mr. Don McLean. Late 1971, people took to it immediately. Debates raged as to the true meaning of the lyrics, but most agreed it was inspired by the death of Buddy Holly. It was McLean's debut hit, and it spent four weeks at number one on United Artists Records, The Day the Music Died. Yes, it's American Pie, Don McLean's song number 12 in 101.1. A long, long time ago. CBS FM, American Pie, Don McLean, song number 12 on the top 20 oldies countdown. Here's the number 11 song moving up from uh, number 12 last week, one notch. In 1965, Cheryl and LaPierre had her first solo hit with All I Really Want to Do. Seven years later, in 1972, she hit the chart with this song. It was her fifth top 20 solo hit, and it would peak at number seven on Cap Records. Here's Cher, The Way of Love, The Way of a Fool, song 11 at 101.1. Top 20 oldies countdown song number 11, 6 o'clock straight up. Tony Warren's got news. On the other side, I've got more bonus hits, and we'll continue to count down the hits of February 27th, 1972, right here on the Top 20 Countdown.
the World Trade Center's emergency plans crumbled in yesterday's explosion. 30 degrees, partly cloudy at WCBS-FM. Tens of thousands of office workers in the twin 110-story towers had to fend for themselves in the dark, smoke-filled buildings. One man who negotiated 60 flights of stairs in pitch-black darkness says there was no alarm, no emergency lights, and no public address announcement. Officials say the confusion wasn't due to a lack of preparation. Stan Brezhnev, the executive director of the Port Authority, which operates New York's tallest building, says the emergency systems couldn't withstand the force and location of the blast. The explosion destroyed the primary and emergency power systems and knocked out telephones, the public address system, and a closed circuit TV system. Now, World Trade Center officials say they'll upgrade their emergency systems, including lighting and stairways where evacuees walked in smoky darkness after yesterday's explosion. But one official bristles at the idea that the systems were improperly designed. He says no one could have foreseen what happened. In the sub-basement of the South Tower, the tremendous explosion blew down through six floors of steel-reinforced concrete, leaving a crater 100 feet wide and 60 feet deep. It left five people dead, two missing, and 1,042 people injured. Meanwhile, officials aren't calling the cause of the explosion a bomb, but are coming pretty close to it. At a news noon conference today, Police Commissioner Ray Kelly says three elements lead him to believe it was a bomb. The, the magnitude of the explosion, the fact that the significant amount of heat was generated, and the fact that uh, traces of nitrate uh, were found. Earlier today, Stan Brezhnev said the superstructure of the WTC is sound, but the nearby Vista Hotel had some structural damage done to it. One guest of the hotel, Jennifer Ross, says she was in the hotel when the explosion occurred. I was on the second floor in, in um, the greenhouse restaurant. It's an all-glass restaurant, and um, we had just ordered, and pictures fell off the walls. Uh, metal fixtures came off the ceilings, and we just covered our heads and, and finally just got up and went. She says she wasn't injured and came back today to get her luggage, and she's going home. Meanwhile, a terminal at Newark International Airport was briefly evacuated today while officials investigated a bomb threat. Police say hourly parking has been prohibited beneath any of the three terminals at the airport since Friday night. Mayor Dinkins returned to New York today and made a brief statement. I'm uh, very pleased with all reports that I've gotten of the reaction of the emergency personnel police and fire and EMS and, and uh, all the others that have uh, been involved, that, that has been the good news. He then headed to the World Trade Center to survey the damage. President Clinton is scheduled to land Monday at Newark for a speech at Rutgers University. The White House hasn't announced any change in plans. CBS FM Sports on the ice today. The Islanders beat the Flyers 3-2, to two, the Devils trounce the Senators 5-2, to two, and the Rangers meet the Edmonton Oilers at 8 tonight. Top 25 college basketball this afternoon. Seton Hall beat UConn 75-63. And more music coming up in a moment on the Top 20 Countdown with Bobby J. But first, drug use isn't always fatal, but did you ever stop to think what it does to the way people live? Addictions like cocaine warp our value system as the habit becomes more important than family, accomplishment, and self-esteem. For a free drug toll-free drug hotline, call 1-800-CBS-FM-101. A message from the Partnerships for a Drug-Free Greater New York and a Drug-Free America. CBS-FM with you in mind. Weekend 101 weather tonight, partly cloudy, breezy, and cold, a low in the upper teens. For tomorrow, partly sunny, a little milder, with a high in the mid-30s. Right now, 30 degrees in New York. I'm Tony Warren, CBS FM. There she is, uh, hooked up with Sonny, and a bonus hit. I think that they were, you know, the on-again, off-again thing was happening there. It's called Cowboys Work is Never Done. As we uh, look back and recap, uh, February 27th, 1972 was a Sunday. It was sunny. The high was 37 degrees, and on stage, Hare was at the Biltmore Theater. An orchestra seat would set you back 12 bucks, while a balcony seat would run you 5 bucks. Gloria Swanson was starring in Butterflies Are Free at the booth there. Jesus Christ Superstar was at the Mark Hellinger. Ruby Keeler was starring in No No Nanette at the 46th Street Theater. Peter Falk and Lee Grant was starring in The Prisoner of Second Avenue. It was at the Eugene O'Neill Theater. And on television at 6 p.m. on Channel 2, it was 60 minutes. At 7 o'clock on Channel 4 is Wild Kingdom with host Marlon Perkins. At 8 o'clock on Channel 7, it was the FBI with Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. starring as Inspector Louis Erskine. And at 10 o'clock on Channel 4, it was Bing Crosby and Friends. This was a bonus hit from Red Bones, Witch Queen of New Orleans in 101.1.
1972. Six minutes away from Dean Anthony in tonight for Cousin Brucey on Cousin Brucey's Saturday Night Oldies Party. And let's resume the actual countdown of February 27th, 1972 with song number 10 moving up four notches from number 14 last week. In their native England, Mark Boland and T-Rex were major stars. However, here in the States, their popularity never reached those heights. This song was their one and only top 20 hit and it peaked here at number 10 on Reprise Records. T-Rex, let's get it on. Bang a dong. Song number 10 at 101.1. CBS FM, that's T-Rex, get it on, bang a gong, song number 10 on the top 20 oldies countdown at 619. I'm Bobby J, counting down the top 20 songs of 21 years ago this very day. Dean Anthony, Dino on your radio for Cousin Brucey coming up at 7 o'clock in a moment. I'll be back and I'll have a little tapestry for you. Song number 9 coming up from Miss Carol King. The top 20 oldies countdown is sponsored in part by American Express. Roxanne, are you awake? It's me, Vinny. Go away, Vinny. I'm not marrying you. Roxanne, don't say that. If I ever thought you didn't love me, I'd jump off this ladder right now. I would. I don't love you. Now leave and shut the window behind you. But, Roxanne, where shall I go? What, what shall I do? Frankly, Vinny, I don't what give up. What about those tickets to Madrid? Whoa, back up. Madrid? You never said anything about Madrid. Well, I know how much you love surprises and how much you love Spain. I do love Spain like I love you, Timmy. Vinny. What's in a name? We're talking Spain. Well, I got a Spain so much to see package. The one sponsored by Iberia Airlines, the tourist office of Spain, and the American Express card. I'm only sorry you want to break this off. Break it off? Who said anything about breaking it off, Jimmy? Vinny. Jimmy, Timmy. Iberia Airlines, Vinny. tourist Spain, and the American Express card invite you to see Madrid for seven days and six nights for only $665 per person. That's Airfare, hotel, breakfast, sightseeing tour, hotel taxes, and transfers included. Restrictions apply. Tickets must be purchased by March 15, 1993. Call your travel agent or 1 800 Spain 99. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Deep dog chocolate and chewy coconut ooh. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. I love to read books, but my glasses are killing me. I wish I could afford a comfortable pair of glasses. At LensCrafters, we believe everyone has a right to the best-fitting, most comfortable glasses at an affordable price. That's why we offer a wide selection of comfortable frames, starting at under $50. Come see us at LensCrafters. We have the prices you want and the perfect fit you need. I never knew LensCrafters glasses were so affordable. LensCrafters. Better fit, affordable comfort in about an hour. Cloudy tonight, breezy and cold, low in the upper teens. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a little milder, they say, with a high in the mid-30s. Monday's outlook, mostly sunny, look for a high in the mid-40s. Currently, it's 30 at 101.1. Top 20 countdown. We now resume the top 20 oldies countdown of February 27th, 1972, with song number nine, moving up one notch from number 10 last week. In 1971, legendary songwriter Carol King released the immensely popular album Tapestry, which spent 15 weeks at number one. Her follow-up album, Music, also hit number one and spawned this single. It peaked here at number nine on Ode Records' Carol King. Song nine, Sweet Seasons, 101.1. Sweet season. For me, not the winter season. Not on your life. Well, I'll tell you. It's Cal King, that song number nine on the top 20 oldies count. Now, pardon me while I cough. Ah, that was good. Yes, here's song number eight, dropping down four notches for number four last week. In mid-1971, this singer-songwriter from Forest City, Arkansas, had his first top 20 hit with Tired of Being Alone. Later that year, he hit the chart with this song and then proceeded to take it all the way to number one. On Joe Kooky's high record label, my buddy, the Reverend, Mr. Al Green. Ah, let's stay together number eight at 101.1. You say it, Al! Station Al Green, staying together with you and me too. Song number eight on the top 20 oldies countdown. It's just 6:29, 31 minutes.
minutes away from Dean Anthony here tonight for Don K. Don K. No, I'm always Don K. Reed. No, it's because I see you, I say Don K. Reed. Isn't that something? I'm such a dummy. Uh, tonight for Cousin Brucey. See, if I didn't see you, I wouldn't have said that. My word. Here's song number seven. It was number 13 last week. In 1970, Canadian singer, songwriter, and guitarist Neil Young became a member of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. In 1971, after the group broke up, Neil resumed his solo career, and in 1972, he hit the chart with this song. It was his first top 20 hit, and it would go all the way to number one on Reprise Records' Neil Young. Song number seven, Heart of Gold on the... Top 20 CBS FM, yeah, Mr. Neil Young, Heart of Gold on the Top 20 Oldies Countdown, song number seven with Bobby J, and uh, here is song number six, moving up one from number seven last week. Back in 1961, the Tokens took this old South African folk song to number one, and some 11 years later, this Brooklyn singer returned the song to the chart. It was his first Top 20 hit, and while he didn't take it to number one, he did quite well with it, took it to number three on Atlantic Records. Here's Robert John in his version of the Weedy Deedy song, The Lion Sleeps Tonight, song six at 101.1. <laughs> CBS FM, the Weedy Deedy song, The Lion Sleeps Tonight, Robert John, song number six on the top 20 oldies countdown at 636 with Bobby J. And here's the number five song, up three for number eight last week, led by David Gates. This Los Angeles group first hit the chart back in 1970 with Make It With You. Now, a couple of years later, they hit with this song. It was their fifth top 20 hit, and it would peak here at number five on Electra Records. Here's Bread With Everything I Own, number five at 101.1. CBS FM. That's everything I own. Lock, stock, and barrel. That's bread. That's song number five on the top 20 oldies countdown. Here's the number four song, moving up one for number five last week. Back in the early 70s, this family group out of Ogden, Utah, were all the rage. Led by Little Donnie, they first hit the chart in 1971 with One Bad Apple. A year later, they returned with this one. It was their fourth top 20 hit, and it peaked at number four on MGM Records. Oh, so cute. Here are the Osmonds down by the Lazy River. Song number four at 101.1. Well, one. Doing tonight? The Lazy River. CBS FF down by the Lazy River. Those are the Osmonds on the top 20 on these countdowns. Song number four. Got time for some bonus hits. How about one from Little Donnie? As a soloist. Reprising the song that was done back in the 50s by Paul Anka. Yes, they called it Puppy Love. Yes, yes, we're big dogs now. And no longer a puppy love. On to the final three of our countdown of February 27th, 1972. Here's song number three. It was number three last week. The debut hit and the only top 20 hit for this Cleveland group, led by Sonny Garachi, who also sang on the Outsiders' 1966 hit, Time Won't Let Me. It peaked at number three on Rocky Road Records. Here's Climax, song three, Precious and Few, The Moments We Share at CBS FM 101.1. CBS FM, yes, Precious and Few, The Moments That We Share. That's Climax on the top 20. Oldies Countdown, that's the number three song. Here's song number two. It was number two last week. Since their debut in 1970, Karen and Richard Carpenter had released seven records, and six of them had gone top five. This one peaked here at number two for two weeks on A&M Records. The carpet is hurting each other. It's number two at 101.1. CBS FM, well, clock five LPs. The number five album, Led Zeppelin by Led Zeppelin. Number four, Hot Rocks, 1964-1971, The Rolling Stones. Number three, Music, Carole King. The number two album, The Concert for Bangladesh, George Harrison and Friends. And the number one album, 21 years ago today, Don McLean's American Pie. My thanks to Jeff Macy and Billy Sabatini for helping to put it all together. And to our friend Steve Piazza, who supplies many of the records we use on the top 20 oldies countdown. Uh, up next, Dean Anthony. Dean, I'm on your radio for Cousin Brucey. I'll see you tomorrow at 3 at 5. Tomorrow we'll count down the top 20 songs of February 28, 1962. Here's the number one song. It was number one a week ago. This song was originally recorded by the group Badfinger. However, once Brooklyn native Harry Nielsen heard it, he was determined to record it and have a hit with it. In 1972, he did just that and took it all the way to number one for four weeks from the Nielsen Schmielsen album on RCA Records, Nielsen Without You, number one at 101.1.